we talked about changes in price and changes in income. In this video, we're going to talk about the substitution effect and the income effect. Now, for normal goods, we know that a fall in price always increases the quantity consumed. Something falls in price, you buy more of that. This fact could be proven by dividing the price effect into two parts. And these two parts are the substitution effect and the income effect. So let's just go through what we initially thought. Initially, our income was $40 and our wood price was $8. This is an example that I've been using for the past couple of videos that we've been through. And we consume at point C. Now, the price of wood falls from $8 to $4 and we know that the budget line would rotate outward to meet point J on indifference curve I2. So then our new best affordable point is J. Now the move from C to J is what we call the price effect and this can be broken into two parts and those two parts are the income effect and the substitution effect. Now we'll just go through the substitution effect first. The substitution effect is the effect of a change in price on the quantity bought when the customer remains on the same indifference curve. So here is our initial figure with our income being $40 and our wood price being $8. Now to isolate the substitution effect, we will give ourselves a pay cut. Pretty dramatic, sad face, but this causes our best affordable point to fall to point K. So that's pretty much the substitution effect. The, 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 this it causes us to fall from point C to point K on the indifference curve. And you can also see that our budget line changed. So our budget line shifted and or shifted is not a good word but uh, changed to this new uh, lighter orange budget line. But the thing is that both C and K are still on the same indifference curve. So on this new budget line, the best point to consume would be at point K. So that's why we moved point K. The, the budget line is the tangent to point K on the same difference curve I1. So the move from C to K is what we call the substitution effect. Now the direction of the substitution effect never varies. When the price of a good rises, then one will usually substitute that good with a less costly alternative. And the substitution effect is the first reason why the downward curve slopes downward. And I really can't think of any way to explain this more clearly. Uh, if you just want to know how it works, then, or if you just really want to know, uh, you could just memorize it to memorize the fall as the substitution effect and uh, memorize the, the thing I'm going to show you for the income effect. But usually, substitution effect, if you see on a test, then it's usually just from a point C, something like giving a pay cut happens, which causes your budget line to shift and you move to some other point on the same indifference curve. That's the definition of a substitution effect change in price on the quantity bought and then the custom consumer will remain on the same indifference curve. So that's all you gotta remember. Change in price, consumer remains on the same indifference curve. We do our price change and but we still remain on the same indifference curve when you move from point C from point C to point K. Now the income effect to isolate the income effect we will reverse the pay cut and restore our income back to normal. We're back on indifference curve I2 and our best affordable point is J. So what actually happens is uh, we had our substitution effect. So our budget line was this lighter, lighter orange that I mentioned in when we were talking about the substitution effect. Now we now the income effect comes in, into interaction our pay cut gets reversed and back to normal so we can move back we can move to indifference curve I2 with our alternative with our lower cost lower costly alternatives so we move from point K to point J and 
that is the income effect. Now for us, or for me actually, wood is a normal good. We use it for everything, paper, etc. Um, wood is a normal good. Now with more income to spend, we buy more wood. So the income effect is positive. Now for normal goods, the income effect reinforces the substitution effect. And that's the second reason why the demand curve slopes downward. So to do a recap of this whole thing in action as the price as a, a buildup of the price effect, what happened is substitution effect happened first. What happened is uh, there was a change in price on the bond there was a change in price and on the bond quantity bought we remained on the same difference curve. So our point C from point C we moved to point K. And then what, what happened after that is the, in, the income effect happened. The income effect happened, our income got restored, and we moved from point K to point J to a new indifference curve. And now we are consuming more, uh, more wood and same amount of t-shirts as, bef as before, or actually more t-shirts than before, because before we were consuming three t-shirts, and four pieces of wood, but with more income, we now consume four t-shirts and six pieces of wood. And that's as simple as that. To actually see it more easily, all you need to remember is that for normal goods, if you're in the same situation that I'm describing right now, we go down from C to K and then we move out from K to J. So it's kind of like a leftward motion where the down the down motion is the substitution effect and the, and the out motion is the income effect. And that's how we make up the price effect. And that's all I'm going to teach you guys today. I uh, hope you got what I tried to convey. But other than that, if you haven't already, please rate, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.